What's up, Internet? I'm Daniel, the Pitch Professor, and I have a new video, and this headline caught my attention, where I just couldn't say no, and it's most impressive pitch ever, question mark. This time it's from Dragon's Den, so there's the UK version, and yeah, I just have to take a look at it. And without any further ado, let's roll the video there. That was dramatic, huh? First up tonight is London-based Lucy Rout, who's freaking out at the thought of facing off with the dragons. What am I doing? <laughs> okay. Okay, come on. Oh, shit. I know my business. I, I gotta jump in here. This is, like, I love that scene because that's literally me backstage before going out on stage. If you don't know who I am, I'm a professional speaker, professional moderator slash MC and an entrepreneur. And I've, besides that, coached thousands of startup teams over the past decade in pitching. Yet whenever I go on stage, I am literally shitting myself. I mean, not really, but like, I am so nervous. And every time before I go on stage, I go like, why am I doing this? Why? And as soon as I go on stage, it's great. What's helped me a lot with this is reframing it in my head. And it's very simple. Now, I've been I'm happily married. Uh, I've been going out with my wife for 14 years. But I, I go back to our first date. And when I, when I met her the first time, I was so nervous. And I was so excited. And holding the hands, hands for the first time, like, my, my feelings went all over the place. That was fantastic. However... The month before, I'd gone on other dates with other women and I didn't feel anything, which is a safe sign that that's not the right person. You probably know that from dating yourself. Like if you go out with someone and you feel nothing, that's probably not the person you're going to marry or in entrepreneurial sense, the person you want to have an investment from or whatever. So nowadays when I'm about to go on stage, I think back to that moment and in my head I suddenly go, okay, if it's not exciting, it's not the right person, right? So if it's not exciting, it's not the right stage. Or if it's exciting, that is the right stage for me. So in other words, I've reframed it for myself and so should you. The excitement simply is your brain, your body telling you this is important. Embrace it because it's going to sharpen your senses and also understand it's just a minute second of excitement and a lifetime of everything ahead of you. Now, a couple of years ago, before I walked out on stage to host a major uh, live television event, I had a director, the director, walk up to me and said, Daniel, when you go out on stage, you're going to try and breathe as quickly as you can. And talk as quickly as you can. Because fight or flight is going to kick in. Fight or flight is going to kick in. What I want you to do is to breathe as slowly as you can. And talk as slowly as you can. And I love that. And I've been on stage at that point for 10 years. So I love that bit of advice. And I loved hearing it from one like him. Who's, who's was incredibly seasoned. And I was at that point already. had been a professional moderator for years already. And he still gave me the advice. So what I'm trying to say here quite long is it's perfect to be nervous. I'd rather be worried if you're not nervous at all. I'm nervous every single time. And so is, I believe, Lucy. And that's a good thing. And I understand the market. But to be really honest, the imposter syndrome is always going to be real. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit terrified. Got to jump in as well. Imposter syndrome. Look it up. It's a great thing. Very often people just simply they believe they don't be belong there. Are other people thinking you're just pretending to know. But for me, it kind of gives me a good feeling for her. I like this. She seems like a likable person um, and someone who seems to be down to earth and very open with her feelings. Some of you might consider this a weakness. I just I kind of like that person. Let's find out. I've watched this show since I was a teenager and I've seen firsthand the avenues that it can unlock. Come on. Fun fact, I think Dragon's Den was the second version of this. I believe the Japanese version was the first. 
And it also kind of kickstarted my personal career because um, I actually ended up co-hosting the first season of the Austrian version of Dragon's Den. I know that seems a little far-fetched, but that's the thing also. It's been going on for close to 10 years. I just did season one. I'll do a video about that some point in time. Why and why not? Um, I, I, I didn't continue. But uh, it's incredible what Dragon's Den has unlocked over time and what it's also done for entrepreneurial ecosystems because you can talk about and see it the way you like and it is a show at the end of the day and that's something you can also criticize. But then again, it's also a stage for bidding entrepreneurs and the large audience. Just like Lucy. My biggest fear is letting a bit of a lack of confidence hold me back. Hello Dragons, I'm Lucy, the founder of Taboo. I'm here today to pitch for a £50,000 investment for a 25% stake in my business. Following a reconstruction... Got to jump in here. This is season 20, so this is, uh, I believe, in the year 2023. So it's a very recent episode, and you can see just valuations going down. This is really interesting. So this is a 50k for 25%. That means it's a 200k valuation. Um... That's that's a lot lower than you'd see on Shark Tank uh, and probably also episodes and seasons before. But this is just in line with the overall startup ecosystem and valuations going up and down. So fair enough there. ...of my digestive system to remove a pancreatic cancer back in January 2020, I was told I'd need to take medication with food for the rest of my life. I was handed this very plastic pill case and sent on my way. Having previously enjoyed social settings, I suddenly found myself feeling very anxious and uncomfortable whenever food was involved, escaping to the bathroom to take my tablets in private, and for a very long time, I felt I had something I should be hiding or be embarrassed about. This really wasn't helped by the fact that when I searched the market for a beautifully designed, durable pill case, I was really, really disappointed to find next to nothing designed for people like me. So I decided enough was enough and I'm building a business and a brand to once and for all remove the taboo around medication. Thank you. Well, that's the pitch out of the way for nervous 27-year-old Lucy Rout. Got to jump in there first. Um, I like the pitch. I mean, the title's most impressive pitch ever. Um, and before the, 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 the I was going to say the sharks, the dragons give us feedback. Um, I'd like to give you my own. I don't think it was the most impressive pitch ever. But it was an extremely authentic pitch. And it had something I adore, something I love in pitching. And that's if people have a personal story they are willing to share about a personal problem they encountered, searched the market for solutions, couldn't find it, and considered the problem so big and so personal that they decided to solve it themselves because this is that's a hard fight and i like this i like this a lot because these are people who understand what they're trying to fix because they're building it for themselves and by that they also notice there's others that have the same problem this is an extremely authentic story which i like and i think she she paced herself well although she was very nervous so that was fine as well. And understand the speed of how you start talking is essential that other people actually enjoy listening to you. So slow yourself down, intentionally speak slowly, intentionally breathe slowly. And from the inside, it's going to seem as if you're talking like this. However, on the outside, it'll seem normal. So do that. And also understand no one is going to think bad of you just because you are nervous. It's something likable. It's something you don't need to hide because of course you're nervous because you're showing everyone this is important to me. So, most impressive pitch ever? No. Most authentic pitch ever? Well, certainly up there. And it showed a lot of her personality and personal struggle. And it shows us that she has a deep, 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 deep understanding of the problem. So that's very valuable. Let's see what the dragons have to see on this. You need to take a deep breath. I know, I'm literally shaking. <laughs> yeah. Bye. 
She's looking for £50,000 in exchange for 25% of her business aimed at the 21st century tablet taker. And despite her internal jitters, her polished presentation has impressed Stephen Bartlett. Lucy. Hi. First of all, well done. Thank Incredibly you. inspiring story. And your pitch was phenomenal as well. Wow. Um, when did you launch Taboo? So I launched in the last week of September last year. OK, what's your turnover been so far? So turnover today is £10,431. Yep. We're very small, with a gross profit of around 7300 yep. and a net loss of minus 15000 If I may quickly explain that loss, in order to set up the business, I had to invest into stock. So I currently have over 4,000 units left of stock. And how big is the, the market you're going after? Because this is a product that seems to be, from your words, designed for your demographic. The size of the market is very difficult to quantify. But anyone that basically needs to take medication on the go, in terms of scale, with a bit of money and a bit of support, this is a really scalable business and the market opportunity is huge. Interesting discussion going on there. First of all, very clear questions towards revenue because at the end of the day, people want to know what kind of traction do you have. If you have traction numbers, get them out there. What a bad place to pause it for Stephen Bartlett. He's not going to like that. Um, but anyway, um, there you go. Probably doesn't mind. Probably doesn't care. Probably never watch these videos. But if you, if you do, sorry about that. Um, so straightforward to the numbers. I like how precise she is. And when, he was, when she was asked about the market size, she wasn't sure about it. And she straightforward said she finds it hard to quantify, but everyone with that problem. Yes, I'd like to have a clearer number on that. It seems a little fishy, but in that context, okay, fair enough, because as an audience, probably a lot of us understand that that's just a lot of people, whatever that means. Um, what she didn't mention so far is if she has any patents or anything, because at the end of the day, I mean, there's no, if I, if I get it right, there's no software, there was no specific data she's collecting. She's essentially built nice box uh, called Taboo. Um, could also be like an adult toy, to be honest, just with the branding and, and, and the setup, but it's obviously not, but still just saying. Um, but fair enough, fair enough. Let's, uh, let, let's, let's listen in. Lucy's confidence begins to climb as she pushes the potential of her pill case concept. Deborah Meaden has been familiarising herself with the product. It feels lovely. Thank you. And now she wants to get a grip on it. I say it in every single video, but if you're here for the first time, two quick things. Number one, never pitch alone, because reading the facial expression of your audience is incredibly valuable. And quite often, you're just simply not going to be able to do so, either because you're nervous or because you've got light shining at you or whatever it is. So never pitch alone. Have a second person observe them, number one. And number two, if you have something your audience can touch, feel, try out, give it to them. And give it to each and every one of them, or the jury, investors, or whatever, but also understand that they're going to require some time to play with it. So if they're playing and fiddling around with it, like me with my pen right now, understand that the attention is going towards the, there's more light, the pen, but not to what I'm talking about. So observe, wait, try and make eye contact, and then continue on talking. Don't talk while they're actually trying to figure out how it works themselves. It's margins. What do they sell for? Uh, 18 pounds. And what are they costing you? Four pounds 80, which I'm going to very quickly, Tuka, if I may, looking at you, jump in. Because <laughs> I think you're going to come to me and say, I could have made that in a factory for 75 cents, and I'm going to say, fair enough. Can I, can I say something? <laughs> sorry, no, sorry, you Deborah. can't. Can you concentrate on me, please? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank I'm you. Coming, Tuka, in, in, a in a minute, go, go back to Tuka. But go right on. now, sorry, just, yes, I should on. follow my line of questioning. So what are you selling the for at wholesale? £9.60 at the moment. But by the time I've sold through the current stock, I will hopefully have sorted out manufacturing with my good friend Tuka here or any of you um, and the margins will become a little bit better. Right. Can I just go back to something you talked about in terms... That was quite bold saying, look here, that guy over there, I mean, he's going to help me. I need that. I mean, I kind of like it. 
But the interesting thing is Deborah Meaden does not seem to be too impressed that Lucy is not giving her the full attention. And you also have to understand, and I, and I mean it in the nicest of ways, but people have egos. And very often the more successful the people are, the more fragile is the, the, is the wrong word, but the more special their egos are. So always try and understand with whom you're talking and try and research research their egos before you might, just by doing something very normal, very natural, hurt their egos. However, while Lucy's doing that, she seems to be impressing Tuca and Peter Jones a lot by her very open and honest personality. You can read a lot out of that. And I like it, but it's a double-edged sword we're facing here. In terms of profit, yes, it'd be really helpful if you concentrated on me <laughs> rather than winking at Peter and answering Tuka's questions. I'm so sorry. You talked about oh. your stock levels yeah. affecting your profit. Well, that's actually not correct. Pardon me if I was incorrect to do so. I used net profit and I took away the total cost of all of my stock in order to calculate that. If I was yes, incorrect, you don't have to do that. You're understating your profit. Okay. So, do you know how much stock you're holding? Yeah. So, set the, with the retail value of seventy-nine thousand pounds. What's the cost of that? Okay. About fifteen, yeah. sixteen thousand pounds. Yes, roughly. Which would have said your whole presentation would have changed. I've turned over ten thousand four hundred and thirty-one. I've spent three thousand pound in developing it, and I've broken even. Okay. Understood. I apologize. That's an over. No, don't apologise. I'm just saying that's good news. Okay. Great. Lucy gets a ticking off, followed by some business advice, which for once has a positive outcome. The narrator couldn't have said it better. It was, it was I said it, ego is, she was not happy, Deborah Meadon was not happy with her, Lucy going around over there. And that's, you need to give the person you're talking to as much attention as possible. It's an interesting one. Um, Yet the advice she was getting was solid. And I think Lucy's selling herself under the actual true values she has. And that's, that's again, it's a tricky thing. Don't oversell, don't undersell, try and get it right. But there is no right. I think it's a very cultural thing as well. So I think there's markets where you expect to oversell and there's markets where you expect to undersell as much as there's backgrounds. So with that, I mean, I'm a marketer by trade and traditionally marketers like overselling, no offense. And for example, techies like underselling. So you kind of try and grab it that way. <sighs> Cliches, I know, but you gotta say it. Now, Tuka Suleiman wants to swat up on the entrepreneur CV. Interesting. Before you did this, what did you do? So I had six years of corporate experience. Um, so I joined Just Eat where I did two and a half years there learning digital marketing. Um, I then went to Unilever for two and a half years where I did brand building and I currently work for the largest e-commerce um, platform in the world. What is it that you do specifically there? So my title is Startup Development Manager. So I recruit and then onboard uh, small businesses and my job is to accelerate their growth. So I support... Gotta jump in there. That's gold. That's absolute gold. Now... When you're pitching, you need to do two things. Number one, you're trying to earn time. Number two, you're trying to build trust. Earn time, obviously, because you have like a two-minute pitch and what you're trying to earn is someone will ask you a question, you answer the question well, then you have a quick conversation and then you set up a call and then you set up a meeting and then you do a workshop and then at the end of the day, you IPO and world domination. However, the building trust part is trying to give your audience the understanding why you are able to make this work. And just now, Lucy has given our jury the understanding that she knows what it takes to lift off a company from zero to one. And she has an impressive understanding of how brands work. And she has a lot of understanding of how to create brands. Um, this is something, something she... And if it's you doing this, you have to include in the pitch. Now, I know you're trying to be humble and hold back and not, you know, it's special, blah, blah, blah. Yes, it is. And understand 
how much trust this builds on the other side. Whereas if you say, I've never had a, any consumer products, uh, I have no understanding how marketing works, I have no understanding of how startup works, that's okay. But if you turn it around, understand how valuable this information is she's just given, as our friend uh, Stephen here seems to show us as well. I support them with advertising, I launch them in new markets. I help them some PR. You basically like mentor these startups. Okay. Look at that. And um, to be open, the reason why I'm asking that yeah. is because you're in a full time job. Yeah. And I'm trying to work out the balance between the effect that it's going to have on this to be able to say, I need to go all in and yeah. give up that job. Thin ice. These questions are always like, how committed are you to it? There's a lot of investors who will never go into part time founders, they want 100% full time on. I don't know how she's going to answer this, but just be aware of that. If this question comes, you need to be able to answer it 100% honest. And I also understand that most people just want to hear I'm 100% committed. Whatever that means, 100% committed to making this work because as soon as you're getting money, you don't you don't want to have part-time founders there. And it's, it's a very good reason to be. And 99 out of 100 reasons, it's just not having the, you know, well, mm, to go full in. The ovaries or the balls to go full in. And that's what, that's what your audience wants. And if I was to hand over 50K, could there be a level of frustration where you're going, oh, wow, Monday to Friday, you're not, you're not in it. Uh and then you're now exhausted as an entrepreneur trying yeah. to do a startup because you're working full time, so now you're running the risk of burnout. It's also a way of putting it. Peter Jones flags up his fears that Lucy's full time job will relegate running her business to a part time operation. And Stephen Bartlett is wondering if trading equity for cash is the right approach for the entrepreneur. Very dramatic. I don't really know why you need an investor in this business. This business is so unbelievably early, you're going to end up giving away a staggering amount of your company before it's even got going. When you don't need to, you've got 70 odd K of stock there sat in your warehouse. Mm -hmm. Why don't you sell all that stock and then come back to investors at that point and say, look, yeah. I've proven the market, I've learned. Then you're only going to be giving away a fraction of your business for that 50 K you're asking for. Yeah, my rationale is this is very copyable. The product itself doesn't have a patent. So for me, launching with a bang and getting as much support behind me as possible at this really early stage is really important. Lucy, you're very good. You're very impressive. But. <laughs> However, I don't think this business is at a stage where it's ready for an investment. I actually don't think you should be even asking for an investment okay. at this stage. I wish you the very, very best, but um, I'm going to say that I'm out. Absolutely understandable reasoning. And I personally also believe that you should ask for as little as possible, as late as possible. However, there's exceptions. We'll get to that in a second. But the thing is, the later you ask for money, the more you have to prove that what you're doing actually works and the less equity you have to give to investors as risk mitigation. Because... If you have nothing to prove, people are going to say, well, that's a high risk investment for me. So therefore, I want I want a lot of that cake because I'm risking a lot. Whereas if you invest into a fully functioning business model with a market, a product market fit that's incredible and highly seasoned teams and blah, 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 the risk is very limited. Um, so therefore, it's also fully understandable that you just get a small piece of the cake. 25% for 50k is not a lot. So it's a lot of equity for a very little money, which you'll you'll need more money very soon. And with that, she's with every round, she's diluting her equity. However, her answer she gave saying, look, I have nothing to protect. It's just about going to market as quickly as possible. That's one of the few answers you would want to give that make sense. Now, that Stephen still says, 
I understand, but that's not for me is a fair answer because maybe he's not the one who can add the value that Lucy might need at this point in time. I have a feeling there's someone else who could and from the, the, the investors in the pack there. But it's a very interesting, very smart answer to give. Uh, she's doing that very well. You can see that she's prepared these answers. She knows what this means. And that's, that's, that's for you. Prepare your Q&A sessions. And by that, you prime the Q&A sessions during the pitch. There's just things you put into the room where you're trying to earn more time, a.k.a getting questions and these questions are predictable in most cases and having mapped out the answers you want to give and whatever the answers trigger in your audience invest a lot of time in preparing the Q&A session that's what I'm trying to say as Lucy did Lucy loses her first dragon as Stephen Bartlett rejects her strategy Dramatic for success scene closing the book is Deborah Meaden any more receptive to the investment proposition? I think you've asked for too much money. Okay. You're asking for £50,000 on a business that at the moment has turned over 10000 Yeah. It's too big an ask yeah. for an absolutely finger-in-the-air guess on what's going to happen next. So I won't be investing. Fair I'm out. First of all, I'm pretty convinced Peter sees it differently. Number two is um, Deborah's opinion is 100% valid. She's a proven, highly successful entrepreneur and investor, but it's just her way of assessing companies and investing. It's her investment hypothesis that doesn't fit in there, but it could fit in for others. And to be honest, I mean, yes, it's early days, but the way she, Lucy's just said she wants to go on about it, well, fair enough, why not? And to be honest, I don't don't think she's looking for 50K to build up on stock, but she needs people who can help her accelerate this business, including the TV audience. But I do still believe it's a smart move. Lucy, um, I am that customer, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> I had a, a bad on this a few years ago. So I'm on blood thinners, hydrocortisone, right. cholesterol, you name it, I take it. But I'm healthy, thank God. Right. Um, and I do understand. Peter didn't know that. He's going to, and you're still walking. No, I'm just kidding. But the thing is, if you add a personal story to that, understand you're not always just talking to the rationale of people. Very often you're talking to the emotion. You're talking not to the investor, but to the person behind this. And the person behind this has hopes, expectations, fears, worries, hopes. And if that person feels understood, Sometimes it's not just about pure business, but just simply about liking the other person. And I have the feeling that Tuka likes Lucy. He understands the struggle she has because he had the very same. And suddenly it's not just a pure integrity money investment, potentially, but more than that. It's also interesting that Peter and Tuka seem to have known each other for years, yet Peter probably wasn't quite aware of what his buddy is actually taking and struggling and still doing what he does. So also understand sometimes you might open up people to become emotional. And this is an interesting moment in a Q&A session when that happens because it's not just, you know, an imbalance of powers, but it's one person and another person who are both in the same boat speaking. And this is great. So share personal moments if you can, if they're authentic and then you're going places. A great example is, by the way, if you have animals, if you have dogs and you talk from one dog lover to another, or I'm a parent, if I talk from one parent to another, suddenly we share our same hopes and happinesses and struggles and we've gone through the, through the same. It's something that bonds us. Stan, that if you are instructed to take pills during the day, yeah. they can be awkward. Yeah. So, so there is definitely a market. A hundred percent. Um, 100%. I do like your energy Thanks. and your enthusiasm. So I'm going to make you an offer. <laughs> but, but it's going to come at a price. That. I'm willing to give you half the money. Okay. But I want 20%. It's giving you that lifeline if another dragon feels the same way. Understood. Well, thank you ever so much. Oh, my God. 
Interesting offer. So 25K for 20%. Lucy was asking for 50K for 25%. That's a 200K valuation. And 25 for 20 is... Meaning that's 50K for 40%. Meaning that's 125K valuation. So Tuka has reduced the valuation. So with that also, you know, he's kind of reducing his risk by this and also saying, but only if a second of these five heavy hitters joins. That's again a very smart way of mitigating risk. And if you're nervous, if you're anxious, if you're on stage, if you're on fire, it might be hard to make these calculations. I'm look, I'm sitting here in my in my home office and just kind of, you know, relaxed, calculating. So that's straightforward. I mean no pressure on me. I also just always do this in one take, but still it's it's something else than being out in the studio. Um but what I'm trying to tell you is if you go into the ring in the arena, great one by Teddy Roosevelt, by the way, on this, the man in the arena, um, calculate various scenarios of how far you are willing to go. If you're looking for 25%, calculate what does it mean about 30%, 35%, 40%, 50%. By the way, never go over 49%. That's just my opinion. But again, uh, that, that's a different debate, a different video. And just understand that you don't have to do the math in that moment. Just memorize that. Anyhow, interesting proposal. Lucy's luck is on the turn as Tuka Suleiman buys into her positive vibes and tables a bid. But his half offer will only mean anything if another dragon joins him. Will Peter Jones be willing to stump up the other £25,000? The big issue that I have is the fact that you've got this job. Yep. And mm. I think it's wrong for you to give up that job currently. OK. So that's why I'm going to make you a very different offer. Oh, my God. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to offer you a job within our portfolio where you will work with brands, you will gain knowledge at a faster rate that you currently can gain that wow. level of knowledge. OK. You will also be able to work on the business as well. Mm. And I will also offer you £25,000 for this business at 20% and join forces with Tuca. That's an awesome offer. I mean, he's both of them are investing in the person much more than in the company. And that's something you need to understand. Sometimes you see these raw diamonds, driven people who... I've been mentoring startups for more than a decade myself where, you know, it, the business is probably not perfect. But if these people are giving a bit of time, if you work with them for a while, the business they will develop and create, not the one they're pitching today, but the one they'll be pitching in half a year's time or two years time. If you mentor them the right way, if you support them the right way, they will be going places and knocking down every single obstacle that's tremendous. And on the other side, Peter's just um, potentially recruited someone with tremendous know-how as Lucy's been doing startup operations for a huge brand. So a very smart, very good offer. Boom. <laughs> okay. Lucy. Hi. <laughs> I think you're brilliant. You just seem like somebody who would be brilliant to work with. Yeah. So the proposition I'd like to put to you... Sorry, I have to interrupt yet again. You seem like someone who's brilliant to work with. That's what you're trying to find out in the Q&A session. Are you able and willing to work with the other person? And this goes two ways. Is this someone who says, here's my money, do exactly what I tell you, shut up? Or someone who, who with whom you would be happy to go to war with? So whom you're happy to build a relationship forward and backwards, forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. That's why I like this dating example I gave early on. You are building a relationship with someone where you'll have to make a lot of tough calls and you have to like each other, trust each other, have the same vibe. It's a very important factor. And Lucy in her pitch has proven that. Remember how I said most impressive pitch? No, but authentic right up there. Lucy's shown us her character and um, Sarah seems to like that character a lot. Okay. Is I will give you all of the money today. 
for a 35% stake in your business. Not bad. But if you return me my 50,000 within the next 18 months, yeah. I will drop my stake to what you've asked for at the 25%. So that's my offer. Thank you so much. That's a good one as well. A third dragon swoops in with a bid for a smaller cut. That meant a lot to you, didn't it? I can see in your face. <laughs> Am I not hiding it very well? Sarah Davies' offer of 35%, reducing to 25 when she gets her money back, has left Lucy shell-shocked. Do you need to speak to the wall? Yeah. Yeah. That's the end of her Peter imposter Jones syndrome, mate. Suleiman have joined forces, but are demanding a 40% chunk. And in a move rarely before seen in the den, Peter is also throwing in a job offer. He really doesn't say very much, does he? <laughs> I don't get it when she was talking at the wall. Thank you all so much for that unbelievable offers. Oh, I really don't want to get eaten alive. Is there any way at all of bringing Sarah in so we could have three dragons? Blimey, you really do want your cake and eat it today, don't you? <laughs> yeah, but with, with some tablets afterwards. <laughs> yeah. God. So your counter proposal is split the 50,000 investment by three dragons, yep. and we would then have 40% of the company for that 50,000. Yeah. I, without doubt, would relish working with Sarah and Tuka on this to get you. So I'm very happy if Sarah and Tuka are happy. Honestly, Lucy, I would be more than up for that. I'm in. Are you accepting that offer? Yes, 100%. <laughs> Thank Great. you so much. Well done. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Great stuff. Thank you so, so much, guys. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Lucy entered the den feeling terrified. Oh my Oh my god. She leaves with no regrets. I nearly pulled out of this opportunity six times last week because I was absolutely petrified and I felt that <laughs> I wasn't good enough to be here. So if there's something you want to do and you're terrified, go and do it because that could be the outcome. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. That got me. I am. Mean, Loved it. What a great outcome. And just understand, it is normal to be shitting yourself. It is normal to wake up like, what the f am I doing here? I, I can't do Just do it. At the end of the day, when you're 80 and lying in bed and 110 or whatever it is, and think back in life, you're just going to regret the things you didn't do. Imagine going there and getting absolutely ripped apart. Fair enough, you learned you weren't good enough. Then work harder. Imagine you would have gone there and you missed, messed the numbers up improve them come back again do it again imagine you went there and blew your pitch prepare better imagine you didn't find the right co right co-founder but still have a mission work on the mission find the right person but imagine you were just that person who said ah man i wish i would have but you know I'm gonna look back and just think like man i wish i would have done it i wish i would have found out in that sense no excuses go do your thing and I'm 100% convinced that there's only one person in the world that can actually stop you. And that's you. Don't be that person. Go out there and just effing do it. You're awesome. In that sense, thank you so much for joining me um, in this and on this little channel. And um, it's always a pleasure seeing you. If you're still around and haven't liked, I'd be happy. If you're still around and enjoyed this uh Lots more videos coming because I have a little bet going on with myself that 2024 I'm going to release a video per week. Because I don't want to have the excuse that I didn't try this little YouTube adventure. And uh, if you like that, subscribe. And um, I love the comment. There was one or two of you commenting last week and that made my day. I like that. So go for the comments. And in that sense, thank you very much for joining me. Take care, stay safe and see you next time. And bye bye.